a super person I think you should know That in the dark I glow like a fluorescent iridescent piece of Elvis velvet art I'm a man of very little needs Playing almost all record speeds with power Derived from a planet you never heard of or explored. And it's you and only you I tell my secret to. And me and you and only you will have that. And more, everybody. Stephanie, <laughs> everybody. Hey guys, you look like a nice group. I think this will go well. Uh, and thanks for coming to the Comedy Attic. Uh, it's a great place. Uh, we like to brag about it. The owner mentioned it. Uh, Travel and Leisure Magazine voted us one of the best comedy clubs in America. And I think that's amazing. And even more exciting, I just heard this. Did you know that Travel and Leisure Magazine was just voted worst magazine? <laughs> by Magazine Magazine. Did you know that? It's very exciting. <laughs> also one of the top addicts in the country. That's true too. One of, voted one of the best addicts. I just got up here and I don't try to be controversial. I'm not that kind of comedian. I don't like to step on people's beliefs. But here we go. I'm gonna say this. I don't believe in ghosts. I wanna say that. I don't. I know. Some people do. It's not that I don't think they could be real, I just hope they're not real, because if ghosts are real, they're all doing a horrible job at once. You know, it should be scarier. Things should be scarier. A ghost should be the scariest thing you can think of, you know, but then the proof people give for ghosts is always so subtle, it's just sad. Like a ghost story starts off very dramatic. It starts off great. It's like, 30 years ago today, in this very spot, a man was hacked to death with an ax by an eight-year-old girl. And his tortured soul still haunts these very walls. Well, how do you know that? Well, sometimes we can't find stuff in the kitchen. <laughs> what do you think he's doing it? Like, that's his revenge? I hope it's not. I don't want to think about, I think of like an old guy with an ax just still in his head, like creeping into a kitchen in the middle of the night. And he's like, hit me with an ax? Hit me with an ax? Well, guess what? I'm gonna, I'll just, I'm gonna take your salt and pepper shakers and move them over here. Yeah. Hope you like bland potatoes, you murderers. Like that's so passive aggressive. But that's the story. It's like, yeah, school bus fell into a volcano and now my dishwasher door is just open sometimes. <laughs> I think it's those kids. Like, I hope that's not it. <laughs> Step up the hauntings. That's what I'm saying. Come on, ghosts. Ghosts, how am I supposed to believe in you if you can't even believe in yourselves? That's what I'm saying <laughs> to the ghosts. I've been traveling all over doing comedy. I was recently, uh, I was in the South doing comedy. And I think here in the Midwest, we feel like we're better than the South. And we're probably right, but I think, I love it down there. I tell my friends in the Midwest, you have not lived your life until you have heard an old woman from Alabama call somebody an asshole. It's beautiful. There are like 17 syllables. If you ever get a chance, it surprised me. I was in Alabama and this old lady, she was like frail and she had a bun. She was knitting. She goes, now I don't like to talk bad about nobody. But I always felt that he was just a little bit of an eye <laughs> I was like, holy shit, was that a poem? That was amazing. <laughs> You said that word so good, I feel like you showed me your asshole. Like, I want to live here with you forever. I noticed in the South, I was in the South uh, over the holidays, and I noticed that when you're in the South for the holidays, uh, people kept saying Merry Christmas to me. 
Like a lot. Like strangers would be like, hey man, Merry Christmas. <laughs> they would yell it from across the street like, hey, Merry Christmas. <laughs> they were just jumping out of trees like, Merry Christmas. And then they'd scamper away. And I was like, what is going on down here with Christmas? Like, I get it, it's fun, but what's happening, you know? <laughs> And then, at first I was like, oh, this is just Southern hospitality. You know, people are more polite down here. But then I realized everybody was saying it kind of aggressive. And then there'd be a pause, like, hey, Merry Christmas. <laughs> and I think I figured out what they weren't saying in that pause. I'm pretty sure what they weren't saying in that pause was, hey, Merry Christmas, Jew. Like, that's what it felt like. <laughs> Yeah, you knock off that Hanukkah down here, buddy. Hey, 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 you sit on Santa's lap this year, whether you like it or not, you Yiddish son of a bitch. Like, why are you mad at me? It's such a happy thing to be upset about. Like, hey, deck the halls, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> and that's a lot of pressure to put on me to be the first ever Christmas Jew which is a children's book that nobody reads. Uh, <laughs> I can't do that for them because fun fact about me, I'm not even Jewish. I don't know if you knew that. I'm not, I know you're not surprised. In the North, I just look a little Jewish. I found out that in the South, I am king of the Jews. <laughs> and they wanted me to send my people a message. Like I don't, I don't have any people. I've got one brother. I think he knows about Christmas. Like that's all I can do. But that might have just been in my head. I think we have preconceptions about them, you know? Like maybe I was just assuming that. Like when I was in the South, I just realized I was nervous. I was just like, I better be in my best behavior down here. I don't want any trouble. There can be some ignorance. But then I was like, wait a minute. You know, I am a white man. Like I should be fine, you know? <laughs> Like, I'm sorry about everything we did, but I'm totally gonna cash in on it, like, if I can. Like, why wouldn't I? But I'd be like, I couldn't even do that down there. Like, they wouldn't accept me. I'd show up to the white guy meetings. I'd be like, what's up, white guys? And they'd be like, no, uh, we're white guys. Uh, we're pretty sure that you are a gay Jewish lady. So, get out of town, Merry Christmas. Like, that's what it felt like. Thank you? I don't know. But you guys seem nice. Uh, some of you dressed up, some of you not so much. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> is anybody on a date tonight? Okay, that was sad. Now, <laughs> this is my favorite part. When I asked that last question, did anybody just find out you're not on a date tonight? Because now you know you dressed up for nothing. Congratulations. <laughs> I want to say this as a man, and that's how I think of myself. Uh, I feel like... <laughs> That's what I'm going for. I feel like as a man, I think like dates are kind of fun for guys a little bit, but they're mostly for women, right? We would rather not leave the house and you make us do that. And we're glad to do it for you because we care about you and we want to have sex. Mostly the second thing, all the second thing. And you want to do stuff first for some reason, which I don't understand that. Uh, weird. I don't want to sound like a jerk here, but I feel like if a woman knows you want to sleep with her, she thinks that automatically enrolls her in the Make-A-Wish Foundation. <laughs> like, it's good, it's not that good. Like, it's not the same, it's not equal. You're like, you're pretty, I would like to sleep with you. And she's like, yeah, well, I would like to go to Europe. So, <laughs> fuck me over there. Like, really? Why do I have to do that? Okay, look. Clearly, we both have dreams. Uh, here's the thing. My dream, uh, my dream is gonna take four minutes and is free. So can we do mine real quick and save up for yours? You big dreamer. But you should definitely take women out because women get so, such a kick out of it. They get so into it. They get dramatic. They're like, oh, take me away. You'll come home and she's all dressed up and standing by the door like, oh, where are you gonna take me next? <laughs> yeah, that's why uh, if she knew she wasn't gonna be hurt, I think a woman would kind of enjoy a kidnapping. 
Listen, just as long as where she ended up was nicer than where she started. That's all you'd have to do. She would totally get into it. Eventually. Like, if you grabbed her at work, she'd be kicking and screaming. But if, you know, when you pulled the bag off her head, she was at Cirque du Soleil, that'd be a turnaround. She'd be like, stop it, who are you? Why? No. <laughs> Oh, this is nice. Uh, <laughs> look at you planning out a whole thing for me. <laughs> you know, she'll snuggle up. You can let her wear your ski mask. It's called romance, guys. Get into it. No? Okay. I'll take a lady to, to a nice place. I feel like the nicer the place, the more insecure they are about how well you like it. Like, they're always checking in all the time. They're checking in. And then at the end, at a restaurant, like, a guy in a suit will pop up out of nowhere and just scare both of you. You know, he'll be like, how was everything? Did you have fun? Are you enjoying yourselves? Did you like it? I was standing over there, hiding behind a plant, watching you the whole time. You looked like you had fun. Like, who is that guy? You assume he's the manager. What if he doesn't work there? What if that guy just puts on a suit and bothers people in restaurants? Like, that's terrifying. I'm afraid I'm gonna see him later, you know? Like, what if the date goes well? Afterwards, we go back to her place, we have sex. I roll off and then he pops up from under the mattress like, how was everything? I'd be like, look, buddy, either roll out the dessert trolley or get the fuck out of here. That's what I'd say to him, because we're hungry again. Sometimes you'll see this. You ever see like uh, a really attractive person out on a date with another really attractive person? And that just seems selfish, right? Break it up, you guys. Come on, what are you doing? We all would like a shot at both of you, kind of. You know what I mean? Like don't lock up all of the community's resources at once. <laughs> right, it's a bad policy. If you're already hot, you don't need another hot person. Like that's redundant. Like find somebody different. <laughs> Think about it. If you're gonna start a family with somebody, you should look for someone with opposite physical traits to create a well-rounded genetics <laughs> to pass on to your children. So what that means is, ladies, um, if you're beautiful but lactose intolerant, you need to find a guy who's weird looking but eats a lot of cheese. That's what you need. <laughs> it's me, everybody. I'm the one. See me after the show if you would like to become pregnant. And, <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. Everybody just goes for pretty initially. Initially, we all just go for hot. Like, that's the first thing you always notice. You know, nobody sees, you never see a girl across a bar and go, oh, she looks like she'd be good at woodworking. Like, you never do that. It's always hot. Everybody, we all do it. Everybody kisses pretty people's butts. You're always happy to see a pretty person. You're never as happy to see an ugly person. I mean, you try to fake it. You're like, oh, you're back. <laughs> Thought we lost you, buddy, shit. We took like three lefts, you were spry, okay. But like a beautiful woman can just show up anywhere and everybody's excited about it. I think a beautiful woman can do anything. A beautiful woman can jump out of a cake. That's a thing they're always doing. Have you ever seen that? They're the only ones doing it too. Like in an old movie, a pretty lady will pop up out of a cake and everybody at the party is like, oh. Well, even better. <laughs> you guys, think about it. If an ugly person jumped out of your cake, you would make them buy you a new cake. You'd be like, oh shit. We were gonna eat that, you ugly bastard. What are you doing? I was like, surprise. No, no, you're not. Well, fuck you, I thought it'd be fun. I'm keeping the cake stuck to my ass. It is, it's definitely, it's a double standard between pretty people and ugly people, right? It's not fair, but it's there. Here's another great example, double standard. Uh, sometimes a bunch of pretty people will get together, right? And they'll all hide. And then they all jump out at you at once. What do we call that? A surprise party. Everybody loves it, right? It's great. But then what do we call it when a bunch of ugly people get together and do the exact same thing? A haunted house. Guys, that's so mean. Maybe they wanted to be friends too, but you just ran through screaming like an asshole, just hurting all the feelings in that house. 
Plus, I feel like you can relax around an ugly person, whereas pretty people can make you nervous if they're too good looking. You get you don't you forget how to act. Like there's some women that are so sexy, when they come in the room, I'll freeze up and literally stop breathing. I'm just like, <gasps> what's up, baby? Like I can't. Like I would die if she stayed in there. <laughs> okay, I stopped breathing. I think I figured out what that is. I think I know. I think pretty people make us nervous because when you see like a really sexy person, your mind and your body get in a fight. It's true, yeah, when you see a really sexy person, your mind is like, oh, well this is another human being with thoughts and feelings and civil rights. <laughs> but your body is like, ooh, get her. <laughs> and your mind's like, I'm not allowed to just get her. And your body's like, no, just grab her, we'll figure the rest out later. <laughs> and your mind's like, my body wants to get her. Your mind's like, we better shut the air off to this idiot so she can escape. Freeze him up until she's safely away from him. <laughs> You're welcome, pretty people. I save your life every day. Pretty people, you don't even know what's happening. You don't realize. Pretty people, every time you leave a room, 12 normal people start breathing again. And one guy with a lazy eye drops dead. I hope you know that's the price we pay for your beauty. I think we all just, we all feel like we just want to be loved and feel safe or whatever. <laughs> I think the thing about being a person is you think you just want to feel loved, but I think even feeling loved can get boring, whereas thinking you're going to die always feels like the first time. That's always exciting. No one's ever like, I'm going to die, this again? Like you're always present, you're alert. Danger is the most exciting thing. I think that's why women will go for a dangerous guy, right? Women want like a bad boy. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Women want a guy that might kill him. I don't know why that's so exciting for them. Like he wouldn't, but he could. Like he'd kill for them. He's capable of murder. That's what they want. <laughs> they actually make that choice, which is crazy to me. They're like, who should, I, who should I date? I can't decide. Bob's got a PhD. Billy's got a knife. <laughs> Shit, that's sexy. Where'd he even get that? I don't know. I don't know. This is a tough choice. I can't decide. Bob's got a car. Billy's got a motorcycle. Ooh. Yeah, it's half as many wheels. It's twice as unsafe. I've never felt more alive. I need less wheels, damn it. If I could just find a man that rode a unicycle while firing a handgun into the air, my pussy would explode. My pussy would explode. Mm. Everybody, I think it's not just women. I think everybody likes a bad boy. You know, everybody does. I think, in fact, my theory is I think World War II happened because a whole country chose the bad boy over the smart guy. <laughs> I'll explain. You guys are like, yes, and here's what happened. I think. <laughs> Tell us more. I feel like people don't talk about it, but when Hitler came to power in Germany, that's when Einstein just left the country. He was just like, bye everybody. And he just got, yeah, like that. He just left. <laughs> we planned that out. Hitler came to power, Albert Einstein left, and everybody was like, whatever, nerd. This new guy's screaming and he likes to paint. Like, they thought it'd be fun. <laughs> Einstein went to go teach college in Princeton, New Jersey, and he never came back. And that's when the people in Germany should have known something was wrong. The people in Germany should have been like, okay, shit. Uh, whatever this Hitler character has planned for our country, the smartest man in the world is betting it's gonna be worse than living in New Jersey. Like, that's so bad. Whoa. That, right? I don't even you know. The signs in New Jersey, it says, it's better than the Holocaust. Like, that's what it says. <laughs> Welcome to Jersey. They're proud of that. Uh, I didn't mean to make fun of women earlier. Well, I did because it's hilarious, but I feel like... <clears throat> I feel like I've learned a lot from the women I've dated. I really do. Like, for instance, uh, one time I dated a feminist, and I would, I'd recommend that to anybody here. I would, because when you date a feminist, that makes you question your preconceptions as a man. It really does. Like, I remember whenever she was talking about something a woman had done, uh, instead of calling it history, she would say, uh, her story. 
Yeah, exactly. I thought it was great. Herstory. So what I do now is now, whenever I'm about to have a new sexual partner, uh, instead of telling them that I have uh, her peas, <laughs> I say nothing, which is gender neutral. And I think that's important. Watch your terms, guys. Think about the other person. Don't be sexist. Words hurt. Not as much as herpes, but it hurts. On the, on the list of hurts, it goes herpes, words, and then everything. <laughs> I like how some of you laugh, and then some of you get worried about me, and the people in the front always stop eating. They're like, what's up? I told you we shouldn't have sat in the front, baby. Now we're going to get it. Some of you don't know if I'm kidding. And I would be popular, more popular after shows if I just stopped doing that joke, but I think it's funny, so I do it. And I wanna make an announcement, everybody. I don't have herpes, I wanna say that, I was just kidding. Thank you, one guy's excited about it. Uh, I don't have herpes, I'm not bragging, I'm just not that popular. Like, I just haven't picked it up yet. I'm not even not trying to get it, I just don't have it yet. Like, I feel like I'm not racking up the kind of numbers where that's even really something I need to worry about. Like, to be honest with you, I don't even get tested. Just every once in a while, I'll go tell a doctor the total number of women I've been with, and he'll go, nah, it's fine. <laughs> I'm busy, get out of here. I don't know what's wrong with you. You're closed, you should be having more sex. I don't know what the problem is. I always think there's something wrong with me. I don't know. I'm a really big hypochondriac, which means I always think I'm dying for no reason, which is bad enough, but then I'm also a comedian, which means that uh, nobody ever takes me seriously. Like, that's a, that's a frustrating combination. Like, the last time I had a one-night stand, afterwards I was panicked that I'd caught something. Like, I was so worried, I actually called the girl up I'd just been with, which is weird, but I was just like... <sighs> Hey, it's me, the comedian. Uh, yeah, this is a weird question, but do you know what the difference is between a pimple and a herpy? But then she said, no, what? Well, I guess forget it, shit. Um, <clears throat> click. <laughs> so... <laughs> So you guys don't strike me as uh, voters. That's fine. I don't either. I don't do it. Like, you should vote if you know what's going on, but don't just go in there and like pull levers or whatever. Is it a lever-based thing? I don't even know. I've never been in the booth. You shouldn't, I feel like I keep myself away from the polls. That's a good need. I don't know anything. I realized recently, not only do I not know the issues, I don't even know the jobs. Like, that's how bad it is. Like a friend of mine said he voted recently, he told me he voted for sheriff. I had no idea we could even do that. Like I had only seen Westerns. I was pretty sure. I realized I thought how you became sheriff was you just like took the badge off a dead guy. Like I thought that was, like the old guy's got a tomahawk in his face and you're like, oh shit, okay. Looks like I'm the law in these parts now. Things are looking up for me and my horsey or whatever it is. And then, you, and then you spit. And then this one's even weirder. My friend said he voted for sheriff. Then he told me, he said he voted for coroner. That was even weirder to me. You guys, that means more than one person wanted to be the coroner. Like, that's insane. They got in a fight over it. I don't have cable. Are coroners running attack ads against each other? Like, coroner Williams is afraid of blood and passes out like a lady. <laughs> Coroner Thompson will punch a dead guy in the face for looking at him funny. Thompson, coroner, suck it. Like, I guess the first guy wants it less, and that's less creepy, so give it to... And then I found this out. This is actually true. Where I live, which is here. Here, Monroe County, this is the law on the books. This is the law. In the unlikely event that they need to arrest the sheriff, it's the coroner's job to arrest the sheriff. That's the law, that is the law. And it makes sense if you think about it, because if you think about it, the one guy in town scarier than the sheriff is the coroner, right? Because like, the sheriff can put you in jail, the coroner writes down how you died, and everybody just believes him. Like, that's so much more power. 
He's like a superhero. Like, that's insane to me. I hope that happens. I hope, I want to say that. I hope that the sheriff, I hope his wife leaves him. He gets drunk. He goes nuts. He crashes the cop car one day, you know. He's in a bar just like pushing people. He shoots the jukebox. And all of a sudden, the corner is just behind him. Just pale and black. He just, he floats in. He floats. The corner floats. And he's like, Bill, Bill, I got to take you in, buddy. It gives me no joy, but I got to arrest you. And the sheriff's like, you can't arrest me. I'm the law in this town, goddammit. <laughs> you arrest me, you won't be able to leave your house for the rest of your life without getting a speeding ticket. <laughs> and the coroner's like, all right, Bill, uh, you do that, and I'll, uh, I'll smother you with this pillow and tell everyone you died because you paid a fat lady to sit on your face. <laughs> That's what I thought. We're going in. Here we go. So I've been taking a lot of uh, public transit lately because my career is going so well. And I was recently, <laughs> I was recently on the uh, the L train in Chicago, which is the train in Chicago. And <laughs> there were these two like pretty young girls sitting next to me, and I was eavesdropping on their conversation because they were pretty, and I'm a creep. So. <laughs> I, just, I like listening to women that are friends talk to each other because I feel like they're just more supportive sometimes. Like, it's cute. Because the first girl goes, oh my God. Oh, she was white too, by the way. That comes up later. <laughs> It'll be fine. She's like, oh my God, I had the craziest dream last night. And her friend was right there like, oh my God, tell me all about it. <laughs> and then I was like, oh my God, tell me all about it. Like, I was... <laughs> Lurking in the shadows, like a coroner. <laughs> and here's the dream we all heard, and I'm not making this up, this was her dream. She was like upset, and she was like, <sighs> in the dream, there was this man, and I couldn't see his face, but he had the most beautiful, big, shiny afro. <laughs> and then everyone on the train went, at the same time. <laughs> and she goes, and he was just, he was, he was stabbing me. <laughs> and stabbing me. <gasps> and stabbing me. <laughs> and then she goes, what do you think that means? <laughs> and her friend goes, oh my God, I have no idea. And then I was like, ooh, 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 shit, ooh, fuck. <laughs> You want to have sex with a black guy. You want to have sex with a black guy. Sex with a black guy. I wanted to tell her what I thought it meant, but I wasn't technically in the conversation, so I couldn't actually tell her that. And if I stand up on a train and yell, fuck a black guy, suddenly I'm the weirdo, even though that's what she needed to hear from a friend. I think... I think really that's why you shouldn't tell people your dreams, you know, because it's awkward, it's personal. Plus, how about this? It's a thing that didn't happen. Like, people want to tell you their dream like it's a story. It was just in your head. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> St knock it off. <laughs> if you think about it, there was only one dream ever in the history of dreams that we all needed to hear. And, of course, that was Martin Luther King's dream. That was the only one. Right? He had a dream that we would all live together in peace and brotherhood as one people. That was a beautiful dream. I'm glad he shared that with us. But he was a great public speaker because he knew to just say that one dream and then he said goodnight. You know what I mean? Like you want to finish big and then just get off stage. Like he would have he ruined the speech if he would have got excited and kept going and told us about other dreams he'd had. And he'd be like, and then another time I had a dream where I had a big beautiful afro and I was just stabbing white ladies. What do you think that means? We'd be like, well shit, that changes the speech, Martin. Now it's a mixed message, kind of. <laughs> Ma Ann. That was his theme song. Mm. <clears throat> you guys seem nice, and I realized, you know, after the show tonight, uh, Saturday night, a lot of you are gonna go home and sleep with each other, and I want you to know I'm into it. Uh, <laughs> 
And statistically, there are enough people in this room that at least one of you is into some really weird shit. Now, don't raise your hand. It's fine. Holy, maybe it's a group. You guys got weird. Uh, we're on a team. Okay, whatever. You know? I think whatever you're into sexually, you should just go for it as long as you're not hurting anybody, right? Unless someone's into you hurting them and then just find that person on Craigslist and beat the shit out of them. Like, it's always whatever you want to do. Whatever you're into, go for it. Just don't be creepy about it. That's the one rule. Nobody likes a creepy guy. I've been told. Uh, I got an email about it. <laughs> you said stop. Okay, look. Um, sometimes, you know, I feel bad for creepy guys sometimes because sometimes you don't know you're being creepy, you know? Like a friend of mine, this is a good example. He's a really sweet guy. He's a nice person. And he says he has an Asian fetish. That's what he's into. Asian fetish. And then he doesn't understand why Asian girls aren't into him too. And I'm like, dude, maybe it's because you keep using the word fetish. Like that's a creepy French word. Nobody wants to be a fetish because we all know that a fetish is just a preference held by a person who lives in a basement. You know, like a weird guy. <laughs> like, why'd you bring me down here? I want to go home. You are not a photographer. This is not art. But sometimes you don't know what you're into until it comes up, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't think I had an Asian fetish, but I knew I loved Chinese food, so here's what happened. <laughs> I think I was the victim here, you guys tell me. I just remember, <clears throat> one night I was home alone, and I just called up the Chinese restaurant by my house, and all I said was, hi, I would like a delivery. I don't know why I said it like that, but I did. <laughs> But then the lady on the other end of the line said, and I quote, Uh-huh. I'm sorry, what? Uh-huh. What could we get for you tonight? Shit. Uh, oh yeah, food, sorry. <clears throat> Can I start with two egg rolls, please? Two egg rolls. Uh-huh. Small order of pork fried rice. Uh-huh. Why don't you give me two more egg rolls, baby? Give me all the egg rolls you got. Give me all the egg rolls you can stand to give me. Uh -huh. Give me a crab rangoon, baby. Give me a gooey, gooey crab rangoon. Uh -huh. Is that what you want me to get for you? I spent $1,000 on Chinese food last night. Turns out I'm into that. I didn't know. I didn't know if I was, and then I was. So, some people are probably into some stuff that's so weird they feel like they can't even, you know, admit to it because they're worried about being judged, right? So some women probably think they have to lie to their boyfriends or husbands to get them to go along with something kinky they want to try. Like they have to try to trick them into it. Like, oh baby, mm. oh I got the hiccups pretty bad. It's hiccups. You know, they say the best way to cure the hiccups is to scare somebody. So uh, what if I go jogging really late tonight and you can just jump out of the bushes with your big dick and rape me? <laughs> well, baby, ha have you tried a glass of water? We have several of those right here in the kitchen. I love you, but I'm afraid of what you need from me right now. And I don't want to put my clothes on just to go rip yours off. Like, that's fantastic. Selfish. Selfish. I think I might be learning things about women I should have figured out a long time ago. Like, I just recently realized that uh, how important a gesture is to a lady. You know, it's not how much money you spent on them. They just want to know that you were thinking about them. I'm 35, I figured that out last week. Like somebody should have told me. <laughs> I could have used that information, you know, but it turns out it's true. Like for instance, if you just give a woman $6, 
If you just like throw it at her face, I don't know. You're like, there you go, baby. She'd be like, fuck you, six dollars. I don't need your six dollars. Is that what you think of me, six dollars? But if you present a woman with just six dollars worth of flowers, she'll be like, oh my God, am I a princess today? What's happening? <laughs> she can't even believe it. It's the same amount of money. It's basically a trick, is what it is. It's a trick. You can do it whenever you want. You don't even have to buy flowers. You're a hero if you find flowers. You can be like, baby, I'm drunk, these are fake, and I took them from a grave. But I did it for you. She'll be like, oh my God, are you saying that our love will never die? Because that's what I'm getting from this gesture, you sweet, stupid man. Sometimes when you're dating somebody, I've noticed women want to ask you these random getting to know you questions right before bed, like these questions just come at you in the darkness right before you fall asleep. I was falling asleep next to the girl that I'm dating, and in the darkness I just heard, what's your favorite kind of candy? And I was up, I was like, are you trying to molest me? Like, what's going on? I'm already here, it works, what's up? And then in the darkness I heard, my favorite candy is sour punch straws. <laughs> and then she was just out. Like she delivered that message and then just went away. It was weird. But I'm, tr I'm trying to get better at like remembering things like that. So the next time I saw her at a bar, right? I walked up to her and I just whipped out the three available flavors of sour punch straws, you know? It's like, bam, for you. And I thought she would just go, oh, hey, you remembered. But instead she like teared up and went, oh, sour punch straws. <laughs> just held that face. And then, <laughs> and then her friend came over and her friend just also knew that was her favorite candy. And then her friend went, oh, sour punch straws. <laughs> now they're both doing that. And then, <laughs> But then her friend goes, I need to go home. <laughs> because my boyfriend is an asshole. <laughs> you guys, with $4.95 worth of candy, I made her night so well, I ruined her best friend's night. She was like, I have been whispering fun size Snickers in his ear every night for seven years. And he has not done shit with that information. Uh, we were falling asleep uh, the other night, and I actually, I had a question for her. Uh, I was like, hey, do you enjoy blowjobs too, or are you just like clocking in for that? You know what I mean? Like, are you getting, I'm gonna keep asking, but are you getting anything out of it? And she said, not really, but I just do that for you because I like you so much. And I said, well, I really appreciate it. <laughs> I was like, oh, blowjobs. <laughs> That's when I get like that. <gasps> you got me a blowjob. I get emotional about it. She said, I'm not really, but I do it because I like you so much. And then she said, would you ever do that for me? You like me that much? And I was like, well, how would I do that for you? And she looked at me and she said, would you suck a dick to save my life? And I said, I said, yes, I said, yes, baby, I would do that for you. And it was like a tender moment. And then I went, but wait a minute, how did you get yourself into this situation? Like, let's, let's look at your choices, baby. Like, what have you been up to? Shame on you a little bit. I mean, how did you let your student loan debt or whatever get to a place where I have to do that to save your life? Shame on you. But yes, I said yes. And then... She knew that she had me there, so she wanted to see like how far down she could get me, so she goes, okay, thank you. Um, would you suck a dick so that I could have a new car? And I was like, well, what kind of game show is that? Like that's, watch a crying man suck a dick for a new car. Like, no, I'm not doing that. No, not at all. That's where I draw the line. That's the line. And then she goes, well, would you, would you suck a dick so that you could have a new car? And I was like, oh yeah, totally, for me. 
I didn't even think about it. I was like, yes. I think I'd suck a dick for a ride. And I didn't know that until just now. But we're talking about you, princess. I've noticed that is frowned upon. You're not allowed to do that. Isn't that weird? You can't trade for sex. You can't pay for sex. It's the one thing everybody wants, but all you can do, the best you can do, is just hope for sex. You're like, I hope it's today. You wake up and you're like, maybe today. You look in the mirror and you're like, I would fuck me. What's going on? Why is nobody... <laughs> sex is hope-based. That's why, that's what a date is. A date is you have dinner with a stranger and you hope dinner just goes so amazing they want to fuck you. Like, that's a lot of pressure to put on a meal. <laughs> Nothing else ever goes that good, you know what I mean? And, you know, women don't have to, of course, but as a man, you feel betrayed if you buy a woman dinner and then she walks, you know, inside. You're like, I bought you the jumbo shrimp. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> you feel, it, 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 it's, it's cruel, ladies. It is cruel. But we have to do it that way because the reverse would be crueler if you were like, hey, if this sex goes good, you get to eat. Like, that would be weird. <laughs> That'd be a weird system. I think we should try it for like a year. See what happens. And if you saw a fat girl, you'd be like, she's been fucking a lot of guys. You know what I mean? She's been... Good for her, shit. <laughs> people love food. I think you can make noises in public if you're enjoying food that you can't make for anything else. Like people make borderline obscene noises when they're enjoying food. Like, I took a girl to Red Lobster, because I have that kind of money, and it was a while ago. I took a girl to Red Lobster, and uh, the waiter brought the, uh, the Cheddar Bay biscuits. I don't realize people love these biscuits. People go crazy for the cheese biscuits at Red Lobster. And he put the biscuits down, and she just started like putting biscuits in her mouth and just like moaning. She was just moaning, and biscuit crumbs were flying at me. Uh -huh. And she moaned so much, it like stuck with me. I was like, this is gross. But then the date actually went well, and we went back to her place, and we got in bed, and then I went down under the covers to do that, and then she started moaning again, but it was the same moan. So I was actually down there like, is she up there having biscuits? Like, what's going on? Did she wait till I was down here so she wouldn't have to share with me? How selfish can one person be? Like, I was getting pissed. I was like, I'm down here doing hard work for her. She's up there reaching into her purse like I thought he'd never leave. <laughs> num, 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 num. <laughs> the biscuits are so good at Red Lobster, it really sets you up for a major disappointment for everything else. <laughs> at Red Lobster, you know what I mean? You're like, these biscuits are magical. Tell me about the food. And the waiter's like, endless shrimp. And you're like, what's that? And he's like, it's horrible and it never stops. And you're like, fuck, run children, run. <laughs> so you guys, you're looking at me, you're thinking, what's it like to be a celebrity? Well, I'm gonna tell you. I, I realize that I'm not, but this is the job I always wanted, you know? But even when you're living your dream, you have to make sacrifices. Nobody prepared me for what it would be like, you know? Like, for instance, when I'm not on stage, I spend most of my time now alone on the road, late at night in hotel rooms, trying to figure out, like, the coolest way I can call down to the lobby to have them send up uh, it's more lotion. <laughs> That's an awkward phone call. I don't know if you've ever done that. Because <laughs> as a comedian, you're in the same hotel all week, and when you check into a hotel, they give you a bottle of lotion this big. I don't know who this is for. A perverted baby. I don't know who needs that amount specifically. I think they have bigger bottles, but they see me coming, and they're like, give him the little one. He looks like a toucher. No, it'll be a funny phone call later. Give him the baby one. So I call and ask for more. I try to disguise my voice and sound like I just have really dry skin. I'm just like, yeah, it's real flaky up here on the third floor. We get some lotion up top and they're like, I think a pirate's jacking off upstairs. 
We need a detective and a medical crew up there immediately. <laughs> Solve that case. I don't do that, you guys. I try to be professional about it. I'm professional. I call the lobby. I'm like, hey, guys, up in room 231. Love the hotel. Hey, real quick, I'm all out of lotion. They say, okay, great. We'll send up the maid. I say, hey. Even better. Do that. That's what I wanted. Do you provide that service here? Have they mentioned me? They say that's not what we meant, and now we're going to send a security guard up with your lotion, you piece of shit. It's not that weird. I can feel them judging me when I do that, and you too a little bit, and I don't appreciate it. It's not that weird, okay? It's not, that's what it's for. It's not like I'm having sex with other parts of the hotel. That would be alarming. I'm not there yet. I'm not, I'm not calling down to the lobby like, I'm out of towels, I need more towels. And they're like, what did you do with the towels we gave you? And I'm like, I tied them together and made a lady. <laughs> Come on up and meet my scarecrow lover. Like that's, that's weird, they would do that. I think I might be getting weirder the longer I'm on the road. I don't know. You guys are like, we just met you, but yes. I don't know. I have, you spend so much time alone, you get weird. Uh, I have some female friends, and I feel like my female friends would let me know if I got too creepy. But I also kind of feel like my female friends have become too comfortable with me. Because here's something a friend told me recently. She wanted me to know this. She told me, she said that her dildo was dishwasher safe. And I said, yeah, but are your dishes dildo safe? Because I've had dinner at your house. Could have used a heads up on that one. Like I still would have done it, but you should have warned me that you were washing the plates off next to the intruder. I didn't know that about you. I didn't know there'd been rubber nuts on my salad fork or you had a prison shower in your kitchen. I didn't know that about you. I think guys are still worse though. Guys are grosser, right? I can't, like, I can't just tell a guy friend I hooked up with somebody. Guys want a lot of details. And it's never like, oh yeah, did she make your heart feel like a butterfly? Like that's not what they want to know. <laughs> never got that question once. Here's what, I get, here's what I get a lot. Yeah, man, Julie, she's hot. Did she spit or swallow? Like, who gives a shit? I'm just glad she showed up. Like who cares? what you're doing with it later. I'm done with it, I won. You know what I mean? Is that, is that weird that I yell, I won when I come? Should I stop? Beat ya, and then I run away. No, but I think this is a good message. I think they're both great. Ladies, whatever, spit, swallow, whatever, whatever's in your heart. You go, girl. Whatever you wanna do, guys love them both. They're both fantastic, right? Because I feel like, if you swallow, that's like a compliment. That's like she's saying she thinks I'm probably not poison. <laughs> but if you spit, that's even better. Ooh, yeah, if you spit. Well, that's kind of classy, because that, that makes me feel like I'm at a wine tasting, which is, oh my God. <laughs> you must have rich parents. Are we gonna go horseback riding later? Are you, are you the sheriff? Like, I don't know. That's a water. Uh, this happened, a girl, uh, a woman told me recently that I should uh, eat more pineapple. And I thought that was a weird thing to say to somebody you just met. Rude, really. And, uh, but in her defense, she had just gone down on me and that was like a flavor suggestion. Like, I guess they do that. They're like, I want it next time to taste like pineapples. And I was like, but I was so relaxed in that moment that I didn't put those two events together in my head. So I just thought she was the world's most aggressive pineapple salesperson. Like, this was her thing. <laughs> Like she'd been the free sample girl at the grocery store and one day she just snapped and she was like, I'm tired of being ignored. I'm gonna follow you fuckers home. I'm gonna suck you dry and then politely suggest Del Monte Fruit Cup. I need this job. Moving some cups. Big time. I think I think we're becoming more comfortable talking about sex in public, or at least I am. And 
We're becoming more accepting all the time of groups, of people. Some friends of mine, I think, are kind of homophobic, and it's not that they don't like gay people, but I know some guys that are they're actually afraid they'll become gay if they do the wrong thing. Which I don't think that's how it works. It's not like you become a gay guy if a gay guy bites you. I don't think that's... That's still a weird party, but... Last night at a party, a gay guy bit me. Well, you should be flattered. That was nice of him. I guess I'm looking good. I don't know. Listen, it's weird. These, these same guys, they're afraid... They're, I know some guys that won't do certain things with women because they're afraid if they like that, that'll make them gay, even with a woman, which is crazy. But these guys are like, dude, bro, mm -mm, no, don't even, no, don't try it. Don't let her. <laughs> She'll trick you. She'll be like, look over there. And then there it is. There it comes. <laughs> She'll sneak up on you with it. Like, what are you afraid of? Like, what's the, it feels good. What's the problem? Why not? Here's, these guys are, here's their, they're actually worried. These guys are worried. They think that there's a button up there. <laughs> And if she hits it, you'll be like, oh, start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. Ba, 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 da. Bye, baby. Ba, 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 da. And she'll be like, oh, shit, come back. No. Who's going to take me to the movies now? I reset them to the factory setting of sucking dick. Button. Little reset button. Uh... Sometimes sex will get kind of weird with a person, you know, sometimes with a lady, if there's one around. I've noticed that sometimes uh, you'll have sex, you'll have weird sex with somebody, and then you'll fall in love with that person later. And then once you fall in love with them, you really wish you hadn't told your buddy everything that happened the first night you were with her. Guys do that because it takes a while to fall in love with somebody. At first it's just someone you slept with, you don't care about her yet, so you tell your creepy friend everything. You're like, yeah man, last night at a party, this girl let me stick my finger up her butt. And your buddy's like, that's weird, what's her name? And you're like, who cares, high five. And he's like, high five, other hand. All right, cool. <laughs> but now that guy knows too much. You just know that he knows that. So like six months later, if you're still together, you have to sit that friend down and be like, uh, look dude, I know I told you some stuff before. I just want you to know I've been spending a lot of time with this person lately. Uh, she means a lot to me now. In fact, I think she might be the one. And your buddy's like, uh, butthole girls, you're one? <laughs> yeah, that's why I need to talk to you. You have to stop calling her that, okay? It's been six months, you're doing it in front of her, you asshole, knock it off. And he's like, no, man, I'm sorry, I've been wrong. You two, you know, I love you, and so I love her, and you're so beautiful together. You gotta marry that girl. I mean, I don't see how it's taken you so long to put a ring on her finger when she already kind of put one on yours, huh? <laughs> get out, get out. You're not invited to the wedding. Fuck you. That was funny, but we can't be friends anymore. And you guys, I know we've done a lot of uh, butthole jokes here tonight. <laughs> And you seem like a good group of people. You're classy, you deserve better, and I apologize. But you know what's funny about sodomy? Just real quick, I wanna say this. Uh, last one. What's funny about sodomy is technically sodomy is any sex that's not strictly for procreation. And what's so funny about that is, that if you think about it, millions of years of evolution have led to a man and a woman wanting to come together to reproduce the species which is the most important thing. But then at the last second, you can just like stick it anywhere and it feels just as good. Like it shouldn't be that easy to trick all of evolution. <laughs> evolution should have built something in by now where if you stick it in the wrong place on a lady, there's like a loud buzzing noise. <laughs> like in the board game operation, you know, when you messed up the knee, like they should. <laughs> so you could still do it, but your neighbors would judge you. They'd be like, oh, sounds like Kim's not getting pregnant tonight. <laughs> so we could get some sleep, please. <laughs> we have children. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I don't know, sometimes I feel like I'm getting too old to live in a college town, you know? I prefer women my age because they've basically given up, which is very relaxing, you know? <laughs>
Like women in their twenties are beautiful, but I feel like they feel like they have to be sassy because they saw it in a movie. Like a woman in her twenties, she feels like she has to make, give you an attitude. And I feel like if I'm approaching a stranger in a bar, I already feel vulnerable. We don't need another added layer of psychological intimidation. You know, I'm already afraid of you. Knock it off. But a woman in her twenties has to do that. You're like, you're pretty. Can I buy you a drink? And she's like, oh, is that, is that what you think this is? <laughs> You think you buy me a drink and you own me? Is that what you think this is? What do you think this is? What do you think this is? What do you think? Like, I think it's a bar. Like, that's what you're supposed to do here. It's not like I'm busting into the ladies' room at the hospital with a six pack of Mike's Hard Lemonade. Like, who wants to party, you sick bitches? Like, that would be inappropriate. I'll try that later, though. I got. <clears throat> I'm getting too old to live in a college town, I think. I told a girl in a bar I was born in 1980, and she goes, oh my God, you're older than my stepfather. <laughs> and I was mad, so I said, well, well, when were you born? And she goes, 1992. And I go, oh my God, you are younger than Magic Johnson's AIDS. <laughs> if we're playing that game, that's the thing. <laughs> that you're younger, like I got AIDS, you were born, and he's still fine. Like magic's not even limping. <laughs> it's taking AIDS longer to kill a guy than for you to learn anything. Like you realize? <laughs> and, then she, and then she goes, who's Magic Johnson? Like she didn't know. <laughs> and that's when I realized I think we have a bigger problem here because that means that that dude is at AIDS for so long that girls in bars don't know who he is anymore. <laughs> so he could just start going to bars again. He would be very popular. <laughs> this dummy would have sex with him, then she'd have a problem. Know your history, kids. At least know who famously has AIDS. Like, that's a list with one name on it. Like, memorize that list. I love how some of you laughed more and some of you stopped laughing completely. <laughs> <clears throat> that seemed mean, I'm sorry. I, uh, I don't think I'm mean, I think I'm actually am, uh, deep down I'm a sensitive person. Uh, this happened to me recently, this happened. Uh, somebody called me a pussy. I know me, can you believe it? Now, looking back on it, she had a point, but <laughs> what it made me think about is I thought about it, when you call someone a pussy, you're saying they're being weak. We use that body part as a metaphor for weakness. And that's not a weak thing, ladies, right? That's not a weak... Yeah, someone just yelled no with her pussy. Guys, <laughs> no. I'm saying you shouldn't say someone's being a pussy if they're being weak. Because if you think about it, just scientifically, of the two genital options. As far as I know, there are two. Of the two, there's an easy way to tell which one's tougher, and that's just, you know, uh, slap them both. <laughs> slap them both. Very different reaction there. Because you can, you can slap a vagina. You should ask first, but you can totally do it. It's fun for everybody. It's a good time, you can get lean into it. It's a party starter. It's like a, it's like a low five. I mean, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's how they congratulate each other in the WNBA. I think that's what they know. Fire it up, ladies. Woo! Woo! Big second half. I'm just saying, if you slap a penis, they'll stop a boxing match. Like, that's how bad that is. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you doing? I think it's illegal. I think there are guys in prison. What'd you do? I slapped a dick. You can't. <clears throat> okay, listen, here's, here's how tough a vagina is. And I realize that's a weird way to start a sentence, but <laughs> I, was in, uh, I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I used to do a thing in my act about secrets or whatever, and then these three pretty young girls came up to me, and they wanted to tell me a secret, and I had never heard of this before, but they all three said they did this. They said that 
if there, it gets really quiet here every time. <laughs> yeah? They said that if they're ever in a public restroom, all three of them, they're in a public restroom and they pee, and then they pee and then they notice that they're out of toilet paper, they won't panic. They said they just, they'll take the empty toilet paper roll and just, just slap it, just whap it, slap it dry, drop it like a murder weapon and walk out of there. Start the car, baby. We can never come back to this Arby's again. I gotta quit my job. I don't know. I know, look. Like, I don't know if it's true either, but it's impressive as shit. Here's why that's impressive. I don't know if women in the audience know this. You can't slap dry a penis. It's never... It's never even been attempted by anybody. No one's tried it. If you haven't seen it, for the women, for the ladies, it's a, it's a very delicate procedure to dry a penis. It's a dainty little thing. I have my pinky up when I do it. I just... You jiggle it, jingle jangle. You give it a little jiggle. You jiggle it, you jiggle it. You jiggle it gently like you're waking up a baby bird. It's very sweet. You jiggle it gently like a rich child ringing a bell for his butler. That's what it looks like. Meanwhile, ladies, apparently you're off in your restroom slap drying your coochies like a trucker knocking the ice off his tires. That's what you're doing. You're just fucking banging around down there like you're scaring bears away from a campsite. Just ding, 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 ha, ding, ha, ha, get, get. Yeah, and that's why Hillary Clinton should be the next president of the United States. <laughs> no? All right, we just found them. No, it's too late now. You guys all at once were like, was this a paid advertisement for Hillary Clinton? Have we been sitting here for 55 minutes? Well, this has been fun. You guys have been great. I think it's been like a three-hour show, so thanks for staying. And like I said, this is what I always wanted uh, to do. And even when you're living your dream, nobody really believes in you. Like people, people always said to me, they were like, hey man, you know, it's, a, it's crazy, it's a crazy thing. Why don't you go back to college and make something of yourself? And I tell them I tried. I went to community college for two weeks in Terre Haute, Indiana. I know, I couldn't cut it in the big leagues. I think what it was, I think it was that PE credit that got me, because you had to have a PE credit. So I remember I took, uh, I took bowling because that seemed like the easiest one. But then I showed up to the bowling alley on the first day of class and they did that awkward thing they do on first days where everyone sits in a circle and shares something personal, like, my name's Brian and I like to smell things I'm not supposed to. <laughs> I went, I got a panic attack, you know, I don't like meeting people. And I went, I went and I hid in the bathroom. I don't know why. I was just in the bathroom thinking about my life, like, what am I doing, what am I doing with my life? I don't want to be a bowler, you know what I mean? What am I doing? <laughs> and then there was another guy, in the, and he was also in the bathroom, and he was standing like a little too close to the mirror, and he was like combing his hair over and over again. And I realized after a second that he was mentally challenged. He was special, but as would turn out, a really fun guy, because here's what happened. Is I was just like, hey man, what's up? And he went right into it. He goes, gonna get in a car, gonna drive to the airport, gonna fly to my grandma's house, I'm gonna go live with my grandma, and I ain't never coming back. <laughs> and I was like, fucking word. <laughs> and then he does this, I swear to God, he goes, I ain't never coming back. <laughs> what I just say? And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> He was like the special Elvis, it was fantastic. But I didn't want to leave the bathroom, so I played along. I was like, okay, you said, uh, car, airport, grandma's house, never coming back. And he goes, I ain't never coming back. What'd I just say? And it kept going on like that until we both got into it, you know? Like it escalated until he was like, I ain't never coming back, what'd I just say? And I was like, you ain't never coming back, never coming back, never coming back. It just turned into this beautiful, mutual, musical Tourette syndrome. You know, it's like, like just two guys kicking it in a restroom, like DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Like that's how it felt. So it kind of crescendo till he was like, I ain't never coming back. Push me out the door. You ain't never coming back. I ain't never coming back. Push me out the door. So I open the door to the bathroom and I'm all jazzed up. And I push him out hard. And I go, you get out of here. And you don't ever come back. 
And he just ran out of the bowling alley like, yay! And I felt so good in that moment, you know? I felt so warm and good because I'd made a friend. But then I realized that everybody had stopped bowling. And they were all looking at me, and they all thought I had just beaten up a handicapped man and told him to leave town. And I couldn't tell them he told me to do that. So I very calmly, I walked out of that bowling alley. I dropped that class. And I dropped out of college. And you know what, you guys? I ain't never going back. My name is Ben Moore. Thank you so much for coming out tonight.